Hi, welcome back. Today we'll be talking about Ulysses by James Joyce. Started the book last night and I wanted to document my journey reading it. The idea is to do short vlogs and update you guys on my progress every two weeks or so. So today in the first episode we'll cover the intro and part one. This will be my third book by Joyce this year. After the winners that I found just okay. Just over three stars, but it wasn't holy book, so I'm sure if I read it again, paying more attention to the style, I'm gonna enjoy it more. The second one was Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man, which was an instant favorite. And just based on tabs, it's on par with a little unknown book. So yeah, it's about the same. And these are two of my favorite books. For comparison's sakes, I have two other recent reads. The Alchemist, a three star. So you can see there are not many tabs there. And Wine Piece by Tolstoy. So it was a four star. So yeah, and of course I wanted to tackle this one. Um, I did research the different editions and I found that this one was the most affordable one while still giving you a lot of notes and different decent font size and good quality. So yeah. And I got him joking or referencing the memes, but this one contains more than 9,000 notes. So we'll go for the, the intro and the first part. Be aware that the intro is a bit spoilery. I don't think it matters too much for this book. I went blind into it, so we figured things out as we go. So in the, in the intro, we learn about the main characters, mainly Leopold Bloom, and Stephen Diddleys, the same fictional version of Joyce as was used in Portrait of the Artist. So we know Diddleys a bit, and Bloom is said to be atypical and of mixed religion, so I guess it's gonna be, as in Portrait of the Artist, a recurring theme of religions throughout the book. We are warned about the style, so demanding to pay a lot of attention to details because a lot is left to the reader to figure out. So sometimes narration will switch from the third person to the first person and everything is a bit blurred together so you don't really, yeah, you don't have a direct clue that you are switching so from the inner thoughts of a character to narration. And so I will put two examples on the screen and this technique is called the free indirect discourse. On the style, we also have some words and phrases lifted from other languages. So until now, I encountered French and German. So just a few words or short phrases here and there. So yeah, on, the, on the topic of notes, it's an important one because this is this is the story. These are the notes. So you're free to do as you please to read or to not read them. I haven't figured out a consistent routine yet, but. I will often gloss over historical references and focus mostly on the vocab and getting the main meaning. So the main book is divided into three parts and each part is subdivided into, let's call them chapters or episodes. And one thing to know, if you don't know already, is that the story takes place over 24 hours and so each small chapter represents one hour in the, in the day. And so in the part one, consisting only of three chapters, we cover 8 a.m. to 12 a.m. In the first part, we meet our main characters, starting with Buck Merrigan and Stephen Dillis. So we slowly get an idea of how the story takes place. So obviously it's in, it's in Dublin, but we get a bit more information um, with this, each chapter. So like in a movie, we are focusing on a smaller 
and smaller price so we start by knowing we are in Dublin and then we know that we are somewhere near tower and then we go on sort of a, a beach so this part is a bit of a, of a setup we see interactions between Stephen and his surroundings, his family, his debtors, his friends and a dog while he's on the beach in the last chapter of the, the first part we travel with him as he gets ready for his day as he has breakfast and visits his uncle style-wise it's quite demanding because Joyce uses a lot of outdated references to historical figures or to some people that he knew it's hard read but it's not incomprehensible so the nice thing is you don't have to look into the, all the references like to get what's happening you are free to read them or not and to get as deep as you want into the notes so what I do is read from half a page to a page then skim over the notes and read the one that I find the most interesting the tabbing system that I chose currently is five different colors so blue for the main story points then we have yellow and orange for vocab purple for the quotes green for imagery and, and pink for the free indirect discourse uh, switch so I don't have every instance of everything so only the one that I find most appealing and the one that I think will take part in the story so for example page 9 offers a lot of images with a like W scheme that comes over a few pages later on page 21 Shakespeare and White have also been name dropped quite a few times and I'm curious to see how it plays out so there is an almost sci-fi element with the Shakespeare there is almost a, there is almost a sci-fi element to the Shakespeare bit um, because it's like it looks like the grandfather paradox so we will see like how, how this plays out and so at the end of the third chapter we leave Stephen alone on the beach with a boat passing in, in the background so up until now I'm cutting creeds it's a, it's a hard read but it's not overly difficult or convoluted and I hope it will stay that so like in between in the difficulty of, of it um, I just read Portrait of the Artist so I think it's an easier transition especially knowing uh, Stephen beforehand the progression he's been through um, his background and so his motivation as a character so we've yet to do the same with Leopold Bloom I'll keep you updated in the next episode so I hope to finish the book in about two months so taking it really slow because it's quite quite a slow slow read but yeah, I think two months will be a good good timing for it so take care and see you soon